Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. I'm doing a 10 part series on atheism and modern scholarship. And what I want to do in this 10 part series is just to highlight to you the weakness of modern atheism in its scholarship. Now, you might say, well, what qualifications have you got for doing this? I have a degree in theology, I've studied at MA level in theology. For over 10 years I've been reading theology at an academic level and sat with some of the best professors in the world in theology. And this whole series is basically just to highlight to you that the modern scholarship of atheism doesn't really have the intellectual tools or information or scholarship to deal with the questions that it's been posing. Um, that's not to say the people that I choose to comment on um, that they are not that, that, that they are ignorant in some way because many of these people that I mentioned are quite expert in their field but the problem is is when they move from their expertise in one field and make comments and arguments in another field that's what I want to expose through this 10 part series and if at the end of it especially if you're a young person if this series just makes you hang back and be open-minded and be willing to look at both sides then I would have done my job um, I have studied these people that I'm going to mention in depth I've listened to them I've listened to their lectures I've read their books and um, you know I, I have gone into depth quite quite a lot of depth so I want to share that experience with you also I uh, will be mentioning a few more popular atheists and their scholarship and you know I hope this will be a help to you so so I hope as we go into this that you'll be really blessed and you know others have probably heard some of the things that I'm going to say but I think it, it's important to keep repeating these things okay first of all we're going to look at Sam Harris just for a minute now, Sam Harris is an American uh, atheist he is uh, really popular amongst the atheist. Um, he was uh, a sort of dropout from university, went travelling around uh, the east, uh, came back, did a um, PhD in neuroscience, and um, <coughs> wrote his seminal book, The End of Faith, which came just after 9 11. And it's a, quite a vicious attack on uh, organized religion specifically fundamentalism and his book focuses on the fact that the world is in danger because there are these fundamentalist Islamic and Christian they are not rational and if they are not rational they will end up getting bombs and blowing us up now I just want to just show you just unpack this just for a minute just to show you how intellectually naive this is the word fundamentalism was used in the 1920s concerning people who believed the Bible as the word of God who didn't believe in evolution or believe in um, biblical criticism that was in the 1920s so you were a fundamentalist if you didn't believe in evolution or biblical criticism but you believed in the Bible in the modern times when 9-11 happened the word fundamentalist was banded about as those people who are terrorists who blow people up so when Sam Harris is using the word fundamentalist he's using that word that is a the modern understanding of fundamentalist and he's using that to apply not only to terrorists but to Christians as well thereby confusing the word fundamentalist in the modern times with the word fundamentalist uh, in the 1920s this is a, a terrible failure on his part and a terrible failure amongst academics today a failure to differentiate between the modern meaning of fundamentalist and the older meaning of fundamentalist and I would encourage you and encourage other people um, in the academic world to to remember that when people believe 
the Bible is the word of God but they don't believe in evolution or they don't believe in biblical criticism or whatever that doesn't automatically make them a terrorist okay they're a fundamentalist in the 1920s sense not in the modern sense so in other words uh, the um, Sam Harris is guilty of gross generalization and lacking specific scholarship he should have specifically targeted Muslim extremist and kept his rhetoric to that but instead he brought not only is the problem Muslim extremist but it's also the wider Christian community they are in danger of getting bombs and blowing people up so in other words he's effectively demonized people who do coffee mornings you know elderly folk who do coffee mornings in churches they're fundamentalist and they're dangerous as well that's what his rhetoric really comes down to so it, it lacks real in-depth scholarship a lot of people have complained about it in the scholarly world so that's the first one